Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn, because we want to improve, or we want to prepare ourselves for GRE. For a brief second, I was about to post, cut the video and restart it, but the hell with it. It was okay. Uh, we have been solving math problems out of this book here. Math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own it already, purchase it immediately. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 241. On page 241, 2.9.3. Turn to page 241. 2.9.3. It is known. It is. It is what is known as. When the thing is written right in front of me, I still have trouble spelling it. Piecewise function. We're going to learn something, what is known as the piecewise function. What the? Let's see what this means. Okay, let's talk about it. Here, in this function, here, if x is positive, if x is positive, let's say x is positive 5, y is simply equal to x. For example, let me erase this part, this is from yesterday, we don't need it anymore. Since it's there, I'm just going to quickly point out, this deals, yesterday we dealt with what is known as factorization. If you want to learn this uh, concept of factorization, and if you did not watch yesterday's video, start from the very beginning, day 99 through 103, those five days is when we cover this topic, if you wish to learn it. So here, if x is positive, y is simply equal to x. For example, so this guy here, h of x, that's your y, that's your value of y, that's the y coordinate. y equals h of x. And if we, if we are told that it equals positive 7, then in that case, y is positive 7. End of the story. So the first part is very simple. If x is positive, y is simply equal to x. Whatever x is, that's what y is. But, but, if x is negative, then y is equal to negative 1 times the value of x. One more time. So what this says here, y equals absolute value of x, it simply means that if x is negative, then y is equal to negative 1 times the value of x. For example, for example, if, if y happens to be negative 9, then x is going to be negative 9 times negative 1, or negative 1 times the value of x, which is going to give you positive 9. In other words, in other words, h of x, h of x equals negative, h, h of 9 is equal to the absolute value of 9, and of course, absolute value of 9 is positive 9, which is same as saying absolute value of 9, listen very carefully, absolute value of 9 is same as saying negative 1 times negative 9. What if, if you happen to see a negative value under, uh, around the absolute value? you ignore the negative sign. We are not actually ignoring it, what we are actually technically doing is, we are taking that value, what you see inside the parenthesis, and you are multiplying it by a negative 1, whatever that is. Do you understand? For example, let me give you a simple example. For example, let's, let's make up another function. Let's take k of x. If k of x be at all, is absolute value of x squared plus 2x minus 3, well, whatever this value happens to be, we multiply it by negative 1, If, 
if the thing that you see under the absolute value, x squared plus 2x minus 3, happens to be a negative number, happens to be a negative quantity, less than 0, you see? That's how we write it, happens to be less than 0. If this, if this quantity, x squared plus 2x minus 1, happens to be a negative quantity, then the value of y would equal negative 1 times this whole expression. You understand? So that's what that is. Now how do we write it? How do we write it? Just, I need the room again. I need a lot of room, so I'm going to erase some of it. We are done with all of this thing. Let's start here. So y equals h of x. This is how we write it. So this is this part. Let me erase this part here. We don't we no longer need it. So I can put a circle around it, I can demarcate it, put a boundary around it. This part that you see here, we have to be able to express all of that from the English language that you see here to the language of mathematics. Because mathematicians do not like, like uh, are not going to write things, uh, they're not going to spell out everything for you. They use symbols, they have their own notation, they, they have their own language, which is exactly what the algebra is. Algebra is a language. So let's write, let's translate this from the English language to the language of to mathematicians. And we're going to do it step by step. So I'm going to do the intermediate step. So this is how we write it. h of x equals x for as long as x is positive. That's the first part. This is That's the first part here, right here. That's the first part. And then the but part is the part 2. So we have to take care of part 2. y equals, give me one more time, y equals, y equals x for as long as x is positive. That's the first part. Now let's do the part with the but. And y equals, you don't put on the equal sign, equals negative 1 times x if X turns out to be negative. This is how, this is the intermediate step. This is how, this is not how mathematicians are going to write, this is just the intermediate step. Now I'm going to write it exactly the way you will see in your math textbooks. Exact same thing but written in the language of algebra, written in the language of mathematics. There we go. h of x equals x now we're going to read it. Okay, we're going to read it. We're going to read this part here. What it says is that this opposes you y. What it says is that the value of y, listen very carefully, the value of y is the exact same value as x value of y, value of y is the exact same value as x for as long as, for as long as, you see right here, for as long as x is positive, for as long as x is greater than or equal to zero. x is greater than or equal to zero, x is greater than or equal to zero, we say this exact same thing in English language as for as long as x is positive. For as long as x is positive is how mathematicians will say, x is equal equal to or greater than 0. Because if x is equal to or greater than 0, then it's considered, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, except, the, uh, of course, there is, a, there is a little exception of 0 here, because 0 is ne neither positive or negative. But right now, we're just trying to understand the concept. We're not going to be anal about it. We're not going to worry about 0 part. You're right, 0 is neutral, but you get the idea. In which case, you simply take out this part here. But here, we do have to deal with this part. So it, technically it should say for as long as x is positive or 0. Same thing here. Equal to, it's simply equal to x. Here if x is positive or 0, in which case y is simply equal to x. To be technical, to be, to be as I said, to be enough. Second part we write it like this. This is the second part. 
Again, I'm going to read the second part here. It says y equals x. Y equals x. Y would equal x. Y would equal, not x rather, but negative x. I, I messed up the punchline, didn't I? Y equals negative x, negative 1 times x. You see, y equals. Oh, I raised the letter part. But if x is negative, then y is equal to negative 1 times x. I, I erased that part inadvertently. So if x is negative, if x is negative, if x turns out to be negative, if x turns out to be negative, then y equals negative 1 times x, negative 1 times x. Negative 1 times x is just negative x, which is what this is. I'm going to rewrite it a little bit properly here so that everything lines up properly so it looks nice. And this is how you will see it in your math textbooks. That's it. It is usually centered. It's not put on the top along with this guy, nor is it put in the bottom along with that guy because it belongs neither to this one or to that one. It belongs to both of them. Hence, the piecewise function. Piecewise function. Because this function, this relationship between the variable x and y is not just made up of one continuous part, but it is made up of, made up of two parts. What those two parts look like, we'll see in a second. But it is made up of two parts. All abruptly, all of a sudden, we're going to see a change in this shape. It's made up of two parts. Let's plot them, shall we? Now we're going to plot them. We erase all of this thing. We understand it now. We understand the language. This is how it shows up. These are very basic concepts. But for somebody who has not learned it before, or perhaps you did learn it, most likely, of course, you did learn it, but you learned it in the technical jargon, what is known as many, many moons ago. As little boys and little girls in the fourth and fifth and sixth grade, of course, by now you have forgotten it because it's probably been decades since you came, since you came across it. Especially if, if lot, most of my clients uh, are grown up people, they're not just people fresh out of college, they, are, they get their undergraduate degree. They go in the industry, they work for a few years, and they decide to go to get the graduate degree, for which, in order to get the in order to get in the graduate school, they need the GRE. So they come to me, and they've been out of uh, school for many, many years. They've been in the industry, and in your job, you don't come across things like this, so they forget. Which is, it is for their benefit. If you happen to be one of those people, it is for your benefit that I'm doing all this thing in so much detail. Let's plot them, shall we? So here's your x, here's your y. When x is 0, y is 0. Right here, you see? If x is equal to 0, then y, this is your y. Now I'm not, I'm going to stop pointing that one because now we understand the language of mathematics. So I'm going to point to this one, the grown up, the grown up game, which is this right here. X, when x is 0, when x is equal to 0, y is simply equals to x, right here. If x is 0, y equals x. That's what it says, y equals x. For as long as x is 0 or positive. When x is positive 1, if x is positive 1, if x is positive, y is equal to positive 1. When x is positive 2, the y is going to be positive 2. When x is positive 3, y is going to be positive 3. What happens when x is negative 1? If x is negative 1, now we're dealing with the second portion. If x turns out to be if x turns out to be negative, if x turns out to be less than zero, then y equals negative times negative one times negative one. Negative one times negative one, which of course is positive one. In other words, absolute value of negative one. Neg if x turns out to be negative two, then y turns out to be negative negative two. Well, let's put negative 1 first because yeah, the emphasis on, emphasis is on the fact that you have to multiply everything by negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2, which of course is positive 2. If x comes out to be negative 3, y is going to be negative 1 times negative 3 or positive 3. Absolute. In other words, if x comes out to be negative values, so y happens to be the absolute value of these values. Absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. Absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. All you have to do now is to plot these values and you're done. And you will see, as soon as we plot it, you will see why it is called a piecewise function. Let's do it. I need the room. I need a lot of room. 
So I'm going to do it here. I need to erase this part and I need to erase this part. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's do it, shall we? When x is zero, y is zero. Start out here. When x is one, y is one. Right there. When x is one, y is one. When x is two, y is two. When x is two, y is two. I don't know why I'm being so stingy with the space here. I do have a lot of room here. If we can expand it, we can see it better. One, two, three. One, two, three. When x is one, y is one. When x is two, y is two. When x is three, y is three. Right here. That's the first piece. Let's join it. Why do I say join it? Let's join them. The point. There are four of them here. Right here. One, two, three, four. Let's join them. In case you're wondering why in the world drawing a straight line could possibly be this complicated, it's because if you're not used to the, if you're not in the in the business, you wouldn't know it. It's because the whiteboard is a bit slippery, and the marker tends to slip on it when you're trying to make a straight line. So that's the first part. Let's do the next part. When x is negative one, there we go. X is negative one. One, two, three. When x is negative one, y is still positive one. When x is negative two y is positive 2, and x is negative 3, y is positive 3. And that's your second portion. That's your second portion, the second piece of the graph. Fine, that's it, that's what it looks like. Now, this so-called piecewise function does not necessarily mean that it only has two, two pieces. Some more complicated functions the uh, engineers deal with, the mathematicians deal with, could have as many pieces as you want. It can, it, it can have unlimited number of pieces. There are functions uh, that appear regularly in the college textbooks uh, with uh, four or five pieces in it. And it is called a piecewise function. For a different range of the values of x, the function behaves differently, the y behaves differently. It has a different relationship between x and y for a given range of the values of x. Here, there are two ranges. One range is from 0 to infinity. As long as x is positive or 0, it behaves in this manner. If x is negative, it behaves in that manner. Its behavior changes, hence the piecewise function. That's it, we're done. That was 2.9.3. Now we understand it, what, what it means to be piecewise function. And we understand now where this graph comes from, where, that they show you in the book there. Tomorrow, I was about to say we will try, we will not try it, we will damn well do it, we will bloody well do it, which is not try it, but to do it actually, we are going to plot the two graphs that you see on the bottom of the page, 2.9.4. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow then, on day number 131. I'm very anxious to finish this geometry portion so that we can move on to the exercises and finish this whole business. So that we can go move on to more geometry. The entire section of geometry by itself actually begins on page number 248. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.